counselors and administration and welcome back from your weekend. We are going to start our study session. So with that, can everybody hear me? Yes. Yes, okay. Um, Councillor Green. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, items A and B are ready to be voted on at one o'clock. I'm asking any questions from any of my colleagues. Alrighty. Seeing mm -hmm. none, we're going to move on to my item, which is item ready. Councillor Bay. Thank you, Madam President. I have items number 10 through 13. Uh, item number 10 was a discussion last week. There was some confusion. Uh, I recall that at the time of the discussion, uh, they were unaware of what the actual amount of money would be. So the decision was that we would hold that uh, until they knew. I understand that there was a lot of prepared today, but we will not move forward with that item, so that item will be held. Uh, for another committee meeting. Uh, item number 11, uh, pardon me, item number 11, item number 11 uh, was a secret that we discussed for JMA, uh, number 12, number 13. Uh, there were, I don't know if any of my colleagues have any additional questions on those. Uh, and if not, I'll call those items ready. Uh, somebody was attempting to speak, I'm not sure who that was. Councillor Councillor Bay, uh, uh, on twelve, I received over the weekend uh, some concerns re uh, from different neighborhood groups regarding this one. So if I if I could ask you to to hold it, and I'll try to uh, determine exactly what particular part of this their objection to. I, I my speculation it is the electronically amplified entertainment situation up there. This is item number twelve, Councillor. Right, Councillor. That's right. You did ask, Matt. Okay, uh, Madam President. So I have a problem with the uh, As I mentioned, eleven thirteen already. Ten is held on. Somebody was attempting to interrupt. I'm not sure who that was. I apologize, Councillor Bay. This is Jen Tiff, Deputy Commissioner at MBD. Uh, I just wanted to address the issue around item number ten, and I I do apologize for all the confusion around this item, but. The, the letter that was sent to the committee uh, on May the 27th and uh, which was discussed for about 20 minutes during that committee meeting on May the 27th did clearly state the amount not to exceed $400,000. So that's been, you know, that, that hasn't been in question for the last couple of weeks at least. And I, I left that committee meeting, uh, you know, with an understanding that the the committee was comfortable moving it forward. And I, I know there was some confusion during last week's study session about it, but the, the grant application is actually due today at 5 p.m. So if, if it's at all possible to consider that item, you know, we would we would really appreciate it. Well, uh, I, I'm not really sure. I mean, my colleagues can chime in, but when we asked questions this past Wednesday, nobody seemed to know the answer. Uh, I don't know if Council Rudd or Council Holden or Carney want to chime in. What, what's the itemized, like the book I have open, I go to item 10 in the backyard and it goes from nine to 11. So what is the proposed use of the $200,000? So, so the grant request would be not to exceed 400, which I think is, is Part of the confusion there, there was an updated letter that was sent to the committee in advance of the May 27th committee meeting. Um, and during that meeting, we discussed three potential uses. Uh, we, we have to actually um, identify three potential projects to work with research partners about. Um, two of the projects would be conducted in conjunction with Syracuse University, and those would help us to better monitor um, vacant properties and uh, put in place different uh, safety protocols such as those required during the COVID-19 pandemic in some of our uh, municipal buildings. 
And then the third project was in uh, collaboration with New Air, which would be a drone-based project to uh, help with monitoring algae blooms in Skinny Atlas Lake, which, as everyone knows, is the city's primary source of water. My problem is the same as it's been for a while, but I've just grown increasingly frustrated on the like innovation front when it comes to having like a theory behind what you want to do. Like I often just hear us say, oh, we'll do this and something awesome might happen or nothing at all might happen. And I personally believe if you don't have a this, we're aiming for this explicit thing where we do this, where we save this, where we spend money this, where we learn about this, that you're not going to get any of that. And that it's like wasted money. Like it seems like we continue to not have that plan. Like, does this also include the, the city hall sensors and the, the yeah. trash can sensors? Like, I don't understand in any way how that will save money or improve services. It's like purely speculative and like, oh, look, we do things that are seemingly cool, but I don't know. We've, I don't even know why they're cool. But um, so that's my frustration. Like, I just don't understand how this 200 to 400 or 25,000, whatever we get, how it's going to be used to save money. And I well, think I said it, but go ahead. Yes, I mean, the, these types of projects, the reason why the state, and in this case, it's Empire State Development, is trying to incentivize these is because, you know, no one really knows, to your point, Councillor Rudd, um, how, effect how efficacious these might be or might not be, right? So we do have some hypotheses that they might save staff time um, because they, they reduce the need for us to send human beings to actually check certain things, for example, you know, so mo monitoring vacant houses might actually reduce the need for us to send inspectors to do some of that. Um, that's that equates to, to salaries and, and budget, um, but we won't know until we test some of this. So, you know, the state is providing some resources to enable cities like us to test these things and to publish a report that says this is what we found. It's for one year, so it's for, you know, basically the calendar year of 2021. And based on what we find, you know, we could d decide that it's not worth, you know, scaling that pilot up. But it, it could, you know, we could find that it is worth scaling the pilot up. Um, oh, or, or I can just interrupt that. you there because maybe I don't have, maybe everyone doesn't share my concern, but I will just one last time say, I totally reject the idea that we don't know until we do it. We like these things should be guided by math. They should be guided by the number of houses, the number of people involved, the hours, the cost per hour, the number of hours we might save, and whether that's cheaper than the sensor. Like that can all be done. There can be sensitivity analysis to show the points under which it would work, the points under which it won't work. And then we go and we learn from that. Because I, I just, totally reject that like we have to do it to figure it out that's what we've done for too long it doesn't work i'm a no everybody else can go ahead i would rather the state taxpayer i'd rather not spend a penny councillor Ogden county or any other no i don't have any comments Councilor. thank you other comments from anybody questions uh, uh, Councilor, this is uh, Michael Collins. I, I just coming out of the the last committee meeting, we had the understanding that it was ready. I, I believe that uh, Councilor Tiffs had had tried to communicate when it was brought up at the uh, at the last session that uh, uh, it wasn't uh, to clarify that confusion. Uh, so it, it does seem as if we're um, it, at at a point where we may be missing out on an opportunity without it. Moving forward. Actually, no, I said it. Actually, we, there was no confusion in the last meeting on Wednesday because uh, uh, the last study session, uh, committee meeting, excuse me, our committee meeting where I said, you know, asked you specifically what it was. You said you didn't have that information yet. And then I moved on because we couldn't do anything with the item. Uh, I'm pretty sure all who are on the call remember that. Um, and so, I, I mean, you know, I understand that the, uh, the date is close. Uh, if it's not, uh, if it's not a problem with well, my colleagues, we'll move this forward today. Uh, I can't guarantee you it'll pass, 
but we will move forward. But for future reference, as I've stated many times before, let's have our information ready at the committee meetings because if it's near prepared, we're not moving it forward. Period. Just want to make sure that's understood. Madam President, that's all of my items. Thank you. Councillor Rudd. Thank you, Madam President. I have items 14 through 23. Um, 14 is ready. 15, the Naughton contract is ready. Um, 16, 17, 18, 19 are all water. So I'd like to talk about them to the extent counselors are able to open that cheat sheet. Uh, the two page summary, we haven't really spent a ton of time on this. It was like the things were coming in last time. We didn't talk about it. So, if you're able to open the two page summary that I hope most people had time to look at the counselor green sent on Friday. Then I'm hoping that the water commissioner can walk us through that right now to go over the 5 different changes and answer any questions per. Item is that. Why are we doing that now? Well, I, I, I mean, whatever. I don't, I just want to make sure everybody's aware of it. So, to the extent everybody has read over the two pager and uh, is cool with it, I mean, I know Mike and I are cool with it because we spent the most. Councilor Green and I are cool with it because we spent the most time with it. But um, we can just open it to questions regarding the five different changes, if that's. Councilor, uh, I just want to point out that Catherine Kyra has been working on this legislation. I don't know if you're on the call, Catherine. Are, are all of them in proper form for the council at this point? Jesus. Is there anybody from legal who can speak to it? If Catherine's uh, in the mic isn't working or something. She's on the call and she doesn't look to be muted, so I don't know what's going on. It was my it was my understanding, Councilor Rudd, that there were a couple attachments that weren't necessarily correlated to the legislation. So we were trying to make sure those are right. If the water commissioner is here, he can comment on it, I guess. I just want to make sure all the attachments are correct to the legislation. So in particular, I would say that there's we're talking about 16, 17, 18, 19, wait, 20. There are five. Many. Yep. So there's five changes for the five proposals. So are we missing anything? Anybody from legal? This is Commissioner Awald. Uh, I'm working with Catherine to finalize the schedule for meter rebate depreciation. Uh, the last schedule um, regarding the meter fees. So that should be completed by one, but everything else, all the other attachments no, should no, be ready. No, 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 no. It can't be completed by one. I mean, we look at stuff now and we think about it. Okay. And then, so I, so I'll then, I think there are a suite of changes to the water fee. So we're holding one, I'll hold them all. Okay. Uh, Councilor Rudd, could we have maybe a, you know, I mentioned this before and uh, I, I don't have any concerns about it's long overdue. I just want to make sure that I am fully aware of what's what's happening. So, can, can we have? Do you think it's be possible to have um, you and Council agree to have a uh, committee meeting on this? So I'll take a You're poll. To hold it informally. How many counselors? If there's only three that want more info, then I'll do. We could do it offline. But if there's more than three, then I'll do a committee meeting. So how many want to be able to talk to the commissioner more? While we're anybody other than. Councillor Hogan. I'd be interested, Driscoll. Yeah, me as well. As okay. well, Councillor uh, Ryan. Okay, so we'll have a committee meeting. I'll, we'll, Mike and I will, Councillor Green and I will schedule a committee meeting. Thank you. Um, Thank you. The rest of the items 21 is for the school district for their tech camera stuff. That's ready. 22. Oh. The travel is being held. I'm going to hold a finance committee meeting to discuss both the travel and the audit from the auditor about um, the credit card at the same time. Um, so I'll look to do that this week. And the levy. Um, are we, do we, do we introduce and table this one? No, counselor. It doesn't require being tabled. It's a. It's just a levy. It's not a local law. Okay, so the levy is ready. 
as well. So I'll hold 22 and 23 is ready. Thank you. Councillor Green. Thank you, Madam President. Um, so item 24, there'll be a public hearing on Monday, June 22nd. So that item will be held. Um, for items 25 to 32, uh, those items are all ready, unless there's any questions from any of the council. Okay. All righty. Mm -hmm. Seeing none, I'll move on to Councillor Majok. Thank you, Madam President. I have item 33 up to 35. Um, all my items are ready, Madam President, unless if other councillors have questions. Or concerned. Hearing none, we're going to move on to Councillor Allen. Madam President, I have items 36 and 37. Both are going to be held until we have our uh, committee this week, a public meeting this week. So I'm going to hold item 36 and 37. All righty. Thank you. And before I ask for a motion, Madam President, there is a waiver item proposed this week. All righty. So we need a motion to for the waiver item for Councilor Green. Well, yeah, we can. We'll do that at one. I just want to talk about it now in case there's any questions on it. Okay, um, so actually, so Jen, Tiff, if you can uh, talk about this waiver item, what it does, um, why it's being put on by waiver rather than having gone through the normal committee process, and then what the sense of urgency is as to why we want to do it now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, th thank you, Councillor Green. So um, I, as most people might have um, seen, last Wednesday, the state issued a um, somewhat surprising um, approval for restaurants to start to open uh, for outdoor service. And uh, that was effective from the state's perspective as of um, Thursday, uh, June 4th. So I think um, everyone's aware that here in the city, we have a sidewalk cafe uh, permit process for city restaurants that want to use um, sidewalk right of way for outdoor seating. We had not been processing um, uh, permit applications for sidewalk cafes because of New York on pause and the fact that restaurants weren't allowed to serve and we were waiting to see if there would be specific requirements from the state um, as to uh, as to sidewalk cafes. And so we um, we've been holding on those permits. That said, um, now that that restaurants are able to um, resume outdoor seating. We want to make sure we can do this as quickly as possible. We also want to make sure we can make it as easy as possible for our small businesses and restaurants um, to operate effectively. And so this uh, item is to actually waive the fees associated with sidewalk cafe permits just for this year um, as a coronavirus relief effort. I think most people are probably aware our restaurants are some of the hardest hit um, economically from this pandemic. And so this is just one small thing the city can do to make it a little bit easier. Um, so the, the item specifically that you're considering is to uh, temp temporarily waive the permit fees for 2020 for our sidewalk uh, cafes. So, and then two questions will be, um, how much does that add up to a year on average? And then what is the approval process? I mean, they still have to make sure they're following all the rules. Can you walk us through that part of it? Yeah, of course. So for 2019 last year, the city took in about um, $4,800 in sidewalk cafe permits. So it's, you know, on average, just under $5,000 um, a year. This year for 2020, we had um, already been accepting applications. I think we already deposited checks around $1,800. So as a part of this, um, we would also be refunding the 2019 checks that had already come in. Um, and then, you know, in terms of the process, we're looking to um, expedite the processing as much as possible so we can get uh, restaurants, uh, you know, up and running um, for outdoor dining. We will um, use the same application that folks are familiar with um, and follow the rest of the ordinance as written. Um, the one additional thing that we're going to require is just um, acknowledgement that the restaurants have completed the affirmation, which is the 
a requirement by New York State to basically say they understand the safety guidelines for COVID-19 and they're going to follow those. Um, and that basically will require them to submit a, a new uh, drawing for how they're going to use the outdoor seating um, so that we can make sure that they're leaving six feet of sidewalk space for pedestrians, as well as um, that they're spacing their tables appropriately for social distancing. Any other questions from the councilors? Uh, Councilor Green, I, I just think that uh, Jennifer, uh, you might be might have more people uh, apply for this than normally do, obviously, because of the situation. So you might end up, you know, I, I, whoever is managing this better, better be prepared. <laughs> we, we've been having meetings for, well, since last Wednesday, since they made the announcement. So we're getting prepped, Councilor Hogan. Okay. This is, for, and th this is for the rest of the year, correct, Councilor? That's right. Yeah, if, if I could, I've stated to the mayor and I want to reiterate because I'm pretty sure the message was put out there, but you may want to kind of double down on the message. This is a temporary situation. Some folks will still act like they never heard that. So just going to put that out there. Is this going to be for all uh, restaurants or these are the restaurants that already had the permit for the sidewalk cafe? This would be for any restaurant that would like a sidewalk cafe permit uh, for this year. Given that it seems logical there would be more sidewalk permits this year, who is the person that's going to get overwhelmed and what will be the the trade-off of us processing probably many more sidewalk permits. So the, um, the, the central permit office is the um, group that currently takes in these applications. Um, and then they work in conjunction with um, the public works department to actually issue the permits. Um, so, you know, I think uh, they're, they've gotten themselves, you know, organized and they feel pretty confident that they have a process in place to accept these applications. Um, you know, I, I do think there's still, there's still some natural restrictions to um, the ability to, to get some of these permits in particular, just because there are, um, there are some restaurants that are on streets that, that have narrower sidewalks. And so, unfortunately, given the way that the state's requirements are set and, and the requirement to have six feet of pedestrian space, for example, we know that some restaurants have actually already told us they're probably not going to do sidewalk cafes this year that had done them in the past um, because usually we just require four feet of pedestrian space, but the state is requiring six. So, you know, I, I think the numbers might be offset a little bit. Um, you know, so we've heard, for example, from Kitty Hoynes that they might not be doing seating outdoors because they, they're not sure that they can comply with that six foot requirement. Um, you know, so there might be some new restaurants to your point that do apply, but there might also be some restaurants that have applied in the past that decide that they can't do it safely based on the state's um, safety requirements. Jennifer, is the administration considering closing some streets specifically on the weekend to still accommodate maybe extra seating so they can abide by those state regulations? We are, Councillor Hogan. Okay, you've been dealing with the downtown committee regarding that? Correct. Yep, we've been That's working good. closely with them. Jennifer, this is uh, Rita. Yeah, well, from the moment they apply to completion of, of the process, what's the timeline? So um, in the past, we've been able to process the applications in under a week, um, especially if it's a business that uh, has had a sidewalk cafe permit in the past. Um, we already have some of their documentation on file. Um, if it's a new restaurant, let's say it's a, a very new restaurant and they haven't gone through the certificate of use um, process fully, uh, those applications might take up to two weeks because we want to make sure uh, that certificate of use is fully in place. But I'd say, you know, my understanding from the permit office is that, you know, typically it's it's under a week. Um, and, and we've been talking with them specifically because of the situation this year, really trying to, to push to get um, these applications processed um, in a few days to a week 
so that we can uh, help businesses get up and running. Thank you. In, in your response to my initial question of who will do this and what backlogs would it do, you mentioned that somebody at DPW has to go. It's not Chris Ettinger, is it? Like, is it somebody who already has an overwhelming job who has to deal with this surge? So Robin St. Hilaire actually um, manages these applications um, and, and she seems, you know, pretty confident that she'll be able to handle this work workload. So she's the one who goes and actually looks. I assume somebody goes and actually looks. I'm sorry, counselor. Can you just um, clarify Go, goes and looks at what? I mean, they're asking here you could be denied, right? Yeah, we, I mean, we could deny an application if, um, if the, like, if the diagram that they provide, for example, uh, doesn't meet the requirements for, you know, for space, uh, that would be one reason we could deny them. Or if they are, you know, if their certificate of use has expired, uh, we could deny them. So, yeah, there are reasons we would deny them, but we don't actually go as a part of the process to physically look at their space, if that's what, what you're saying. Okay. That, that's um, what I wanted to make. That, that's good. I'm glad we don't. That sounds good. Yeah. That answers my question. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Thank you, Madam President. Motion. Um, I need to make a statement. I'm making a statement today that the city council is unanimously asking or calling for the immediate suspension of the officer involved in breaking ranks to physically push over a Syracuse.com reporter. So I wanna make that clear that we are all in unanimously um, in step with this and we're asking for immediate suspension. And with that, I need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. See you at one.